You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. One of the lessons from this is that there are no routine calls. A new Target 3 investigation reveals more Illinois officers were killed by gunfire last year than we've seen in decades. And today, another officer was laid to rest. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Just before the new year, this Bradley police officer, who was also a former Iroquois County Sheriff's deputy, became the fifth officer in the state shot to death in 2021. Our investigative reporter, Renee Cooper, is here. Renee, it has been years since we've lost this many men and women in uniform to gun violence. Well, Jennifer, I've been digging back through the years on the Officer Down Memorial page, and it's been exactly 20 years since we lost five officers this way. Most recently, Sergeant, Sergeant Marlene Ritmanick. And just the day before her, Deputy Sheriff Sean Riley was killed back in October. Pontoon Beach Police Department lost Tyler Timmons, and Chicago police officer Ella French was killed this summer. And the first loss this year rocked Central Illinois. Champaign police officer Chris Oberheim was killed while responding to a domestic call on May 19th. And in the wake of significant loss, I set out to understand what's behind it all. You mentioned if I worry about my deputies every single day. That is just the environment that we're living in right now. Champaign County Sheriff Dustin Harmon is wearing a mourning badge in remembrance of Bradley Sergeant Marlene Ritmanick and Wayne County Deputy Sheriff Sean Riley. Their deaths ended 2021 on a grim note. Let's be honest. Law enforcement sometimes can be overly aggressive. Law enforcement can have that attitude like do what I say, you know, because I say it, etc. These last two incidents, I'm not aware that there was anything that should have resulted in a struggle. It was more of an ambush. I want the family of Officer Oberheim to know that uh, our association and our members throughout the state uh, hold them dearly in our hearts and in our prayers still because we know it's never over for them. Prior to Champaign Officer Chris Oberheim's death this year, the last time an officer was shot and killed in central Illinois was 2007. The loss of Douglas County Chief Deputy Tommy Martin was pivotal for Sheriff Harmon. He was a deputy there at the time. And my aunt called me and said, Dustin, are you okay? And I said, yeah, sure. Why? I mean, what are you doing? She's like, I heard a deputy was shot in Douglas County. And you can tell I'm a little emotional about it. Um, but it was a stolen vehicle from Chicago that had came down. They went, they, uh, you know, they went off. They did a home invasion. He was going to the scene to do some investigation stuff. The car passed him and saw that he was a police officer and shot him as they passed him. Harmon tells me when an officer is gunned down, the rest of law enforcement can't help but think this could happen to any of them. People feel emboldened to, to challenge authority figures to challenge law enforcement officers a lot more than they used to in the past. And again, that's not necessarily based on statistics or data or anything like that. Just kind of my own knowledge having a master's degree in criminology. People are fighting a lot more than, than they would have before. Ed Wojcicki, head of the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police, has noticed it too. And this has been sort of an overtime shift. Well, well, I think that it's recent. Uh, I, I think that uh, you, you've seen this in, in the last couple of years. With COVID, everything was thrown into flux. That's what I believe is one of the major contributors to some of the things we're seeing. Are they more guarded on scenes? Are there, is there any change in demeanor in how they're responding to any particular call? Uh, I think in general, yes. So, you know, last year I had a deputy who was shot at twice within two months. There isn't much in common between the five shootings that left officers dead last year. Each case is different. The one pattern I did pick up on is at least three, if not four or more of the suspects involved, had their guns, the murder weapons, illegally. It, it's the age-old question, how do you keep guns out of the hands of felons? And honestly, I don't know the answer to that. Now, Wojcicki suggested a couple of ways to offer more protection for Illinois officers. One was additional de-escalation training. Now, that's something that officers are required to go through, but he believes there's room for more of an emphasis. And he says sending more officers together on calls wouldn't hurt either. But then again, that's a resource issue for several of our understaffed central Illinois departments. 
Jen Jennifer, back to you. Renee, thank you. Sergeant.